understand who you want to get help, what you can get help. Um, I don't know, I'll just dance. Um, there's a talk about you, what's happening to you, and um, that hard to find a great monitor. Do I need a mic? Yes, because he's recording. Oh, for the record. Oh. Let's repeat it. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, no. so then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's basically what I just said. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about code quality is how awesome we are. I hope at least it's more of a question. Um, first, who are we? Um, we are Michael Bebka. Um, as a co top contributor measured by Olo, I think it's called, um, by commits numbers. Um, it's over the entire history of the project, so even when it was a CMS, or still part of the CMS officially, uh, it's measured. And of course, Andrew is an unchallenged champion uh, in commits. And we are building the close three over there, Michael, myself, and Elon uh, has a top from us three here. And, um, but yeah, it's those are the top six, and we contribute a lot, but not as much as those guys who been there since the beginning. And uh, yeah, but a lot of fun. We should say, we should say, not everybody who works on the platform works for eBay. <laughs> right, of the top uh, people, only two I think work for eBay, Andrew and Lewis, and uh, yeah. That's it. And, and actually, you took out all the stuff they did. If you took out all the stuff they did before they worked for eBay, they would not be the top committers in terms of commit numbers. So, I'll hold this. You're in the so. Then sprich auch. <laughs> okay. Um, Twelve point one just released last week, uh, as we just said. Um, mainly new, really new code thing is um, first the MVC. Uh, heatly debated because it's not completely compatible with the current MVC structure. And so it's such an integral part of how the CMS works. Um, they're still debating how, um, or we are still debating, how we're going to make the transition possible for extension developers so they can use um, the old MVC still in 3.0 and slowly migrate to the new MVC, which I think nobody in CMS has figured out how to actually use yet. So it's really new code. That's actually coming from eBay. Uh, they're using it internally for really big projects, um, but nobody has really used it for smaller stuff in a CMS context. Um, then refactored database package. Uh, it's actually quite cool. So it's, uh, more database supported. New is Postgres is supported now. SQLite is now supported. And actually, PDO is uh, used internally, so we're gaining automatically access, or with very little effort, access to all those um, database extractions work done in PHP itself, um, which just reduces the work that the platform has to do. And it actually offers new ways to access uh, the database through interfaces, uh, iterators, and is hopefully a bit more performant because now the database connection is uh, opened later in the request, so it's only open if you actually query it. You can set up your database connection really early, and it isn't actually open to the database. It's only open when you actually start using it. Um, yeah, besides that, especially Michael and uh, me a bit, we removed a lot of stuff. We like uh, removing stuff, we like removing code, mm -hmm. and so we removed all the old 1.0 crap uh, in parts and a lot of stuff from 1.5. And many more classes are going to move outside of the platform and going to move into the CMS. So the platform group isn't actually working on them anymore because they're not useful outside of the CMS. And has a nice side effect. Um, the platform can't break the CMS in that way. <laughs> but some, that actually happens quite often because um, the platform doesn't do regular integration tests with the CMS. And very CMS specific code isn't tested outside of the CMS a lot. So um, it's good that we get that, um, that cut done. Sure. 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 So on the, you said the PDO is part of the 12.1. Yes. And that's the object oriented interface yep. database. Is there other PDO drivers that are database specific? Yes. Yes. So there was discussion in one of the morning sessions about an XML abstraction layer to enable Started getting that in the uh, update group. Yeah. But is, is that impactful on the PDO? Yes. Does PDO give us a generic way to to describe? 
not entirely. Ye yes and no. Because then all of the Jersey is minus UCPDL on the sun. So right. you like Oracle or Oracle Mist, I think Postgres use PDO, but my SQL and MS SQL still use um, yeah. other interfaces. Yeah. So you can't use any PDO abstractions from the outside of it, you just use them internally. But um, part of the database refactoring is uh, we've got new abstract uh, importer and exporter classes to work with those uh, XML type uh, files. So we don't actually have working importer and exporters right now for anything but MySQL. But the framework is there so that we can build the abstract common framework and each driver can build its own specific needs. Is that, is that, can that be used to build structures as well as Data, and tables and tables. Yeah, right. That eventually. The the unit test suite okay. uses uh, XML data sets, so I'd envision that we would use something similar to the XML data sets in the unit tests, and that would be that's just one example I can come up so with. We should probably just yeah. so we don't have some group out there doing some extra XML conversion things that would already got in the start on. Well, anything has to, yeah, should always start with looking at what's happening in the platform because if you, you know, there's a, always a lot going on and then if other groups are doing stuff, it should be with an idea of if this is a generic, as a thing that could be useful to many applications, which this definitely would be, then we should be looking at building API for it instead of building a one-off in the CMS. Plus, in the whole who takes care of what scenario, like those kind of things, it's great to put a, a push off on the platform platform team and it's good to keep the, and I, I was going to say about the whole moving stuff into the CMS library, the other thing besides them not being able to break stuff or us not being able to break stuff is that we can actually put things into those libraries now that really work just for the CMS whereas before when there wasn't quite that line there was always like how if these libraries are in the platform is it really appropriate to put any more CMS specific code into them but now we can just say yes because it's CMS specific code. So I, on the CMS side, I'm really happy that we have our own library now. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, do you want? Yeah. All right, so next couple of slides, we're just gonna look at some numbers to show how contributions gone in the platform since it was split off. Uh, officially, the platform was split off in the spring of last year, and the platform 11.1 .1 release came just before CMS 1.7. And in those first couple of platform releases, there was still a lot of CMS coupling, a lot of bug fixes going in just on you know, getting stuff working with the CMS again. So platform 11.3 was the first real independent release of the platform. And uh, you see there that it was just about 200 uh, pull requests from the community over that time frame. And that was a full three month development cycle. And then um, 11.4, you see a little bit a drop because there was a really shortened development cycle to get a platform 11.4 ready for CMS 2.5 and uh, that was tagged just after the Christmas time frame and uh, they decided to uh, push the uh, platform release schedule back about a month to get away from releasing at the holidays so 12.1 had about a four month development cycle which we had 342 pull requests come in from 51 different people over the course of those last four months and uh, this is actually a breakdown of how those pull requests came in from the uh, platform maintainers team and then other uh, members of the community at large and you see that most of those contributions came from other members of the community that the platform maintainers team Yes, they pushed a lot of the bigger uh, changes, such as the MVC and the database refactoring, but you can see a lot of the activity is coming from just people in general, not just this group of, a handful of people. Yes. Oh, we don't know that. <laughs> a lot of them are CMS contributors or um, Bugsquad members, but um, sometimes see, uh, I really like those long, or rather long list at the end of um, 
and we have a list of all the contributors for one release cycle, then there are maybe 10, 15 people with just one pull request. Yeah. Well, people that found one bug, just went on GitHub, just made the pull request, and then were well done. They didn't have to go through a lengthy process, they just know how to use GitHub from uh, 25 other open source projects they use, and just naturally they provide a bug fix for the platform too. And that works really well, I think. Do we know, I mean, did they, were they new trackers? I think it's a mix. There's still a lot of people who it's, I think probably the majority of people are using CMS to build mainly more advanced extensions on the CMS and they're finding some of these bugs that are deeper down into the platform. So we have that kind of cluster of people. There, some of the pull requests are features coming and that's coming from a mix of CMS and platform users, probably still mainly CMS users. But um, then we're starting to see another group of people who are now building on the platform and also just wanting to do interesting things. So um, there's just some, there's a few, what's kind of neat is, you know, you have people who come in and do one and then sometimes they stick around. So that's really nice and there's been a few new contributors that just have started. Like it's kind of neat that you can take on a package or even like one field type within JFORM and there'll be some one person who might fix one little thing about, you know, the media field or, you know, one other field, one field type and then they'll end up doing like six, seven different bug fixes or enhancements on that just as they get kind of deep into it. So it's almost like they're like, this is my project is to get this, this field perfect. Um, yeah, let's just grow out um, how we continually, also we're getting more and more classes, we're not getting smaller as a platform yet. Uh, next release goes here steep drop probably because uh, quite a bit of stuff has moved to the CMS. Well, then we thought we would see the same at 12.1 because we moved a lot of legacy classes. JParameter, JElement, uh, JSimpleXML, overall around 20 classes were removed and we still end up with uh, 25 more at the end. So uh, it's almost 50 new classes added in the past four months alone. And actually interface is counted too and the MVC package made about 10 of those but there's still a lot of new stuff going on and it's growing. <laughs> So does all the new stuff that you have covered? Yes. Unless it's just renamed stuff, then yes. <laughs> Oops. Everything except the image doctor. Yeah. <laughs> she is uh, kicking me around because I made one little small class with, I don't know, 50 lines and missing unit tests. And so I got her here for the rest of the week and uh, you didn't write unit tests. <laughs> Yeah, um, what does it mean for uh, users? We just said um, a lot of deprecated stuff is um, removed, uh, been removed already from the platform. Uh, you can check it out now with the platform, what's missing, what you're currently using. Um, they're also noted in the CMS source code for the deprecated tag. Stop using them. You won't be able to use them in six months when uh, CMS 3.0 is was around. Or if you want to run a custom application on the platform and you want to port your CMS to a standalone uh, your CMS extension to a standalone application, you won't be able to use those functions. So just forget them, erase them from your mind, and uh, yeah, you don't, don't use them. If you don't have logging turned on and you're developing, you're making a mistake. And then if you have logging turned on and aren't looking at the logs, you're making a mistake. So you got to turn it on and make sure that you have it recording deprecated classes for you. And, and then uh, another thing with this. Uh, Not all of them necessarily need to either. Some queries can be written in a database agnostic way, just as a straight SQL statement. But some queries, you know, personally, I prefer to use the API to build the queries just because it's consistent. Yeah. But there's some queries, like, for example, in Smart Search, that just haven't found a way to rewrite using the API. Absolutely, but we need people to do it. So this is like one of the ongoing projects, just like converting to exceptions, right? We need people who are willing to go through the CMS and say, I'm going to take on this project of looking at all the queries and converting them. Now, if something is to the ANSI standard, then it, it will work across database. So everything right now is work 
in theory, working across database. There are a few exceptions in Finder, especially. But, um, but um, and we added things, and this is why the CMS, you see, the platform project is great for the CMS, but the CMS is great for the platform project. So, like, for Finder, for the smart search, we needed union. So I wrote a union method, and now we have union in, in JDatabase, query, and so now we can go back and fix Finder to be faster, because now we can remove that workaround. All right. One more uh, horse to beat here before we move along. There are, there are uh, quite a few methods removed in uh, 12, platform 12.1, which will impact CMS3. Um, a lot of those methods in 2.5 right now already have direct replacements, and they've been available since uh, 1.6. And in many of those instances, those deprecated methods are now just proxies to the new methods. Uh, had this discussion with uh, somebody yesterday, and it's, we just found all this deprecated code, and it started doing a find replace. And I was looking at the APIs, and it's like, you're just using something that proxies as something else. You don't need three months to test this. You can do this in 10 minutes. So I, mean, I encourage you to actually read the API docs, read the code, and see what's actually deprecated, what's actually been removed from Platform 12, and try to move your code to the newer methods in 2.5. You save a couple of method function, uh, function calls, and you make yourself more forward compatible. Um, like I was saying yesterday morning in my session, you're not going to be 100% forward compatible with CMS3 probably until uh, 2.5.6 when we actually have a CMS 3.0 to really look at. And me personally, I would say that I wouldn't support any of my extensions on something older than that because that for me would mean that I would have something concrete to say I can support. And you know, like we've been saying since 2.5.4 came out, you know, those big security issues to keep in mind too. Right. The the scope the scope of change the scope of change in the the scope of change in the template is actually you know very different from the scope of change in the API. Uh, in the end, though. They will go from 2.5 to 3.5. Okay, so we have time. That gives us time to get better at however we, you know, whatever we need to change to make it smooth. We really need to focus on the smooth to Wait. Not as much from 2.5 to 3.0. Okay. Uh, right. You shouldn't be going to 3.0 if you know. You shouldn't be migrating to 3.0. Uh, maybe you should. Uh, maybe you, maybe uh, you, you are, you're a pioneer. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think we also have to just kind of keep it separate in the sense that the, the platform team on the whole, they, they really like the bootstrap model and all that, but they have nothing to do with the core outputs of the CMS. Like, that's what they're trying to escape from. Most of the guys who own the guys who only do platform stuff, it's because they never want to have to deal with core outputs again, right? That is not fun for them. It's it's not interesting, and so that's kind of up to the. If we all switch our hats over, and this is one thing about the three of us is that we both we kind of play both sides of the of the fence, and so we put that hat on. That's where we're kind of messing things up for people is by by changing the outputs. But it's not a platform issue. The platform has nothing to do with what class names are. So. Okay. Uh, All right, so 
looking forward, what's coming up in the platform? Uh, obviously, you get the unified content model coming. You know, we've been talking about that for months and months now, and you know, hopefully, we'll see that finalized here in the next couple months. Uh, we got a new file system package coming along. You know, a lot of great improvements to come in there, and then just in general, lots of improvements across the various packages in the platform. Removing those legacy APIs, embracing PHP 5.3 as since we've dropped 5.2, you know, just little things here and there that really make a big difference. And one thing that's especially important for people they're not using just the CMS, but writing other applications too. Um, they're working continuously on um, isolating the packages. So you can start picking packages individually out. And I'm writing this awesome Zend or Symphony application, but I always like JLog. I want to keep using JLog. So you pick it out. I think JLog only has one dependency. You pick out that dependency too. Put those two in your project, and you can keep using these classes without having the whole bulk of the platform with you as a baggage. And it doesn't work perfectly for everything yet. JLog is actually a pretty good example because it's been pretty good isolated. And we're working on isolating them more and more and more. So uh, hopefully projects of the wider PHP community start using those packages individually. We're really, I think one of the things we want to talk about is that we want to get like dependency mapping so we, so people will know if I pull out one, if I really want this one package, what else do I have to pull along with it? And you know, a lot of projects have like good dependency models where you can check out a certain, you know, the pack, everything you need. A lot of projects have moderately successful dependency <laughs> packages, um, but that's, we want to have a good one and be able to do it. And that's one reason it doesn't matter so much that the way of the platform as a whole because in the end the idea is not for people to always take the platform as a whole is to take the packages they want and then if they want more they can come get the rest okay this slide is kind of in the wrong spots for the best fit after the classes um, kind of the same thing just lines of code this time uh, also continuously growing, actually reducing the blanks. Uh, the big jump from 11.2 to 11.3 isn't actually new code, it's we changed our code style. And uh, you can see it's a bit more, well, let's say wordy, um, actually liney. Um, so that's a big, been a big jump. Um, but now it's actually consistent. And well, if we. Line before every comment, but no lining after the comment. No you put a blank line before every comment, but no blank line after every comment. And um, talking about code stored, as it's, uh, how awesome are we? It's, um, it's been a really interesting ride um, seeing um, like first of formulating consistent code style rules and actually applying them to a rather large code base. It's 10,000 of lines of code. And this is how it's looking. Um, we have three measurements for code style we use. Um, track style, which is just custom style rules written. And they're actually adding more with every release. And you can see it with the second release, I didn't find numbers for 11.1, unfortunately. And, but we decreased them like, I don't know, how many times is that? 500 times? And you can actually don't see the difference anymore. And then we have programming mass detector which is um, a tool that's mostly used to find very hidden bugs and bad conventions. Um, it tells you if you have a function named in a very irritating manner or if you have um, Oh, variables used that are uh, variables declared but aren't used anymore. It's just telling you what stuff you um, shouldn't do to make the code readable. But also, actually, the, the programming mess stuff um, does a lot of, of work on just looking at how complex your control structures are. Yeah. And, and we have some really, really complex <laughs> control structures, and it's hard to take them back apart again, but it's a goal. But the last one is kind of obvious, is duplicate code. Duplicate code is bad because it's not maintainable, and so we're going to reduce that too. And all the rest of the slides are just subsets of that one. Uh, that's just zoomed in for the last three releases. Um, so you can see it's actually still, we're still reducing the numbers, uh, not as quickly as at 11.2 to 11.3, but those that are left are the hardest to fix. So, yeah, that's check style, still going down. Uh, mass detector too, but slower, but also going down. And the most interesting, probably, duplicate code, which actually increased <laughs> recently, um, which isn't really the intention, but um, happens too. And um, we're trying to get to zero, but especially in duplicate code, we probably never will be at zero, because some of those things are incredibly hard to decouple from each other. Do the last one. 
Oh, so what can you do? So, of course, what we want is people to get involved in working on the platform, just like we want people to work on the CMS. But um, the platform has a lot of opportunities, and in a lot of ways, the barriers to entry on the platform are, are lower than for the CMS. And you can write new code. What's really cool about the platform is because they can, like, just take a new method. If it's, you don't have to, no longer have to justify it as we need this in the CMS. It can just be, this is a really useful thing and it performs really well and solves a problem. Um, so it can be you know, anything from just a new method to a whole new, a new class or subclass, or it can be even a whole new package. Um, we have definite, so that's the first thing. There's opportunities to write code. Unit tests, like we're, we really want, right now we've been kind of stuck around 39% test coverage, 39 to 40% test coverage of lines, and so we really, there is a kind of stated goal of 80% coverage, so we're only halfway to where we need to be to feel confident that we have really good test coverage. And someone told me yesterday that Zend is 85%, so if that's who we're going after, that's where we need to go, right? We need to get to 85%. Um, so we really need help with writing tests, and, and we've done a lot of the easy, there's still easy tests out there to write, um, but there's also a lot of really interesting, challenging ones, and if you like challenge, it's a good place to be. Um, and going on with the whole unit test thing, you know, that 39, 40, 41% measurement is a measurement of the platform as a whole. But what that doesn't tell you is that in some of the packages over the 11.3 to 12.1 period, including the extra month and a half in there, you know, we had some packages go from zero testing whatsoever to 50, 60% tested. So, you know, every little bit counts. It may not uh, make a big difference on the percentage because we've got so many thousands of lines of code, but it really does make a difference. No. And then the other thing is, you know, one of the desires of developers all the time has been for better documentation of the APIs and for more, not, we have good, do if I say so myself, we have good doc blocks right now, pretty on all the methods and all the classes, um, but what we still are lacking is more kind of narrative, descriptive, this is what you actually use this for and these are the key points. And so actually packaged with the platform is a doc book manual and the newer classes are really covered well. It's kind of an expectation that if you put a new class in, it will come with both unit tests and, and uh, doc book chapter. But um, we really need help going back to the older classes, especially those classes that CMS users use a lot, even if maybe other developers don't find them as interesting anymore. But we really could use help with doing that, and it's not that hard, because if you look at those chapters, they're pretty short, because it's not meticulously, not necessarily going through every single method in every single class. It's like, describe what this class is about, show some key examples, and then other people can expand on it later. But it just really helps, and uh, I really I use that doc book all the time. Okay. Are we done? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of, I just also should mention that if you're looking for projects too, um, there are, um, for the Summer of Code, you know, we have six Summer of Code projects on the platform, but we actually had a list of about 20 potential platform projects for Summer of Code, so if you're looking for something a little bit bigger and meaty to work on that might take you, you know, six months to do, that's a great place to go look because there's a lot of good ideas there. That's, that's about it. That's about it. That's us. <laughs> In a lot of the doc blocks that actually we've gone back and commented, this is a replacement. Uh, IDEs will usually flag that you've deprecated already. I know when I see that on, that uh, line through on a method, I'll try to actually go to that API and see if I can follow it. The doc block is the best source. We should the, get an issue report about that. And the, the, log, the logger, the logger will tell you you're using a deprecated method in, I think, maybe a half of the instances it'll tell you use X instead. Where does that come from? That's from the, um, the, the deprecation. Yeah. 
Right. right. That's, that's just like a notice. Yeah, that's just someone going in there and putting a J log add uh, statement in that method saying, yeah. And so you just look in your log. If you're logging, that's why I say you should, if, when you're developing, you should have the logger on. Because you have to have that in all the way. I think we've got that log statement in everything, but not necessarily what the replacement is. Right. So and that's a good goal. That's a good goal. We tried. Hmm? Yeah. This, the, we're uh, actually, I, we went back after 2.50, actually back even in 1.7, and we replaced 90% of it. It's really only a really small tidbit left that has to be fixed for deprecated code. It's maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 lines. Yeah. That's really not much. Otherwise, it was really hundreds of uh, methods codes was replaced because, of course, the CMS is incredibly big. It's bigger than almost any extension. And, of course, it's deeply hooked into the API, sometimes back to 1.0 API used. And, um, but most of the stuff is just research and replace. It's just stuff that's moved uh, to another class because we wanted to get rid of the class and there was one method left we needed and so we moved it to someplace else and just changed that. That's not a big deal. Uh, overall, maybe one, two days, um, actually work hours were put into that. And there's a little bit left and a few patches actually submitted to the tracker that just need to be tested and committed. And um, I'm fairly sure I have maintained a branch where I always just takes the current platform and push it into the CMS and keep track of all the fixes needed to keep it working. And it's not that much. It's actually looking fairly good right now. Yeah. Um, the biggest, the two biggest classes I think when it comes to moving from the deprecated code is J error and J request. Uh, we've got J input, you know, fairly good, but there's still, you know, a couple little tweaks here and there that you might have to make for your environment. J error being, the, and there's a reason that J error and J request went to legacy instead of getting pulled out completely because there's still so much code tied into those. So, you know, we still say don't use these meth these methods and these classes. Use the new way, but it's still there to help ease that transition because the, there's going to be a lot of extensions that you can't just up and pull it unless you want to say, well, I'm only supporting this dot release. Yes, absolutely. Right. Not, not do J or not use J exception, log exception, um, what, J database exception. That was actually. Um, Supposedly. And, uh, <laughs> well, no, it happened. But in 1.6, of course, there was tons of 1.5 code. So, and you're always focused on the more new stuff, right? So it's just like with the platform, the docs are better on the new stuff than on the old stuff. So the platform, what's unusual is every the platform team like went back and swept through all the old code in terms of the doc blocks and in terms of the switching to exceptions and in terms of just cleaning up code style and everything. But the CMS, you know, it's so much more complicated, really, and it just hasn't happened, but now we need to start going through and doing that. I was also going to say about the thing about um, the doc box, say, the, uh, the uh, log saying where you should go instead. Like, if you do see something like that, it's, and then you figure out where it should go, making a one-line pull request on GitHub is like five, it's like less than five minutes. It's two minutes. You log in, you click fork and edit, you edit that file, you submit a pull request, and you're done. So please, if you find stuff like that, it's like so easy for us to imp in improve like the internal, doc and that's part of internal documentation really. So it, it, for us to improve internal documentation, it's simple now. So there's like just, but you just have to say, I'm going to do a one-line pull request and make Ruben do some work. Um, J request and J error are kind of special because not everything they do can be replaced in 2.5. Yeah. Um, it's party for J request because w actually one single server configuration which hasn't been officially or in the default file from PHP uh, for years won't be able to use J input. So we're just uh, blacklisting it for um, 3.0 and 12.1. We actually did blacklist it. Um, but the P current CMS still supports it, so we kind of have to keep using J request for some stuff. And J error is just um, the message queuing. Also the 
actual message being displayed. So they have to run through JR because the replacement code is uh, only in the platform and not in the CMS. So, um, but those two classes will stick around in the uh, platform for the next two years probably. Uh, so people can still use them, but they should try to avoid them when possible. So if you're writing an app just for your own server and you know you will never use really old PHP versions with stupid settings, uh, use a J-input. If you have to support public versions and you don't know what server configuration people have, you probably still have to use J-request for, for some time. Or you tell people just don't use Magic Hill 3 PC uh, if you want to use my extension. That's possible too. Questions? Get away. Yeah,